Good evening and welcome to the, the Illinois Virtual College Exploration Series for all Illinois students brought to you by the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. Thanks so much for coming to this session, uh, pre-health preparation and the many ways to healthcare. My name is Joe Freeman. I'm the Director of College Counseling at Beacon Academy in Evanston, Illinois, and we'll be facilitating the session. To answer questions, you can use the Q&A button to type your questions to the presenters at any time. Your camera and your microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off, so panelists cannot see or hear you. Please do sign up for more sessions. This is one of many college presentations going on this month and next month. You can check out that full schedule at www.iacac.org. And a recording of this session will be available. The session is being recorded and will be available at that same website, www iacac.org. It's now my pleasure to turn over this presentation to Patrick Walsh at Illinois State University. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe, and, and good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us to learn more about preparing for a career in the healthcare professions. Um, as Joe mentioned, my name is Patrick Walsh. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at Illinois State University. And as you can see on your screen in front of you, um, I am joined this evening uh, by Lindsay Romeo of St. Mary's College, Jamie Newsom from IUPUI, and Michelle Rogers from St. Louis University. This, this, session, this session is designed to assist you in exploring the many options available to you at the undergraduate level to help prepare you for a career in nursing, medicine, dentistry, physical therapy, optometry, occupational therapy, and many more. Over the last decade, the competitiveness for programs in these healthcare fields has grown. And tonight, during the first 30 minutes of this session, you will hear from four different colleges about programs offered and the resources available to support your next steps towards a career in healthcare. Following the presentation, there will be time for questions. Please use that Q&A button uh, throughout. And at the end, we will certainly field uh, as many questions as we can. So without further ado, first up, I would like to welcome Lindsay Romeo from St. Mary's College. Hello, how are you guys doing tonight? I'm Lindsay Romeo. I'm a senior admission counselor at St. Mary's. A little bit of background about St. Mary's. We are a Catholic women's liberal arts college in Notre Dame, Indiana, with a focus of creating leaders and women of action. We have just under 1,600 students, with about 68% coming from out of state, 32% coming from Indiana. And we also have 43 states and territories, along with 16 countries represented. We offer more than 50 academic programs here at St. Mary's. We are known for having an excellence in the STEM fields. We have a lot of um, science heavy majors. We were founded in 1844. Our first major ever was nursing science. It's still popular to this day. However, we have added a few other STEM majors since 1844. And you guys can see them listed there, biology, engineering, chemistry, mathematics, um, many other pre-professional healthcare programs that our students can do. You can also see the types of graduate programs that our students are, are enrolled in after St. Mary's. So we have um, veterinary school, occupational therapy, PT, medical, physician assistant, you name it, our students have pursued it. A few unique programs are at St. Mary's are the four plus one engineering dual degree with Notre Dame. Students receive their engineering degree from Notre Dame and then a degree in either biology, chemistry, mathematics, or computer science from St. Mary's. It's a really neat program and they get two degrees all within that five-year period. We've also just added as of last year, a four plus one data science program. So they get their master of science within five years. That program's offered through St. Mary's, both the undergrad and the graduate level. So their senior year, they take two classes at the graduate level and then finish up the five years in their last year. We just added a molecular and cellular biology concentration and a neuroscience minor. So all of our students declare their major at the end of their sophomore year. This gives them two years to kind of figure out what they wanna do, discern their passion, figure out how they wanna serve others, whether that's in the STEM field or it could be in another field as well. So when a student comes in, especially if they're interested in the STEM majors, it is important that they know what they wanna do coming into St. Mary's. So if you're a nursing science major, you begin taking classes within that first semester as a nursing student. And it's a very synchronized major where you take certain classes in the fall, certain classes in the spring, 
your freshman, sophomore year, so on and so forth. So it is helpful knowing that coming in and doing some general research, but if you decide nursing isn't for you, you can definitely explore other options while you're pursuing that track to see what you wanna do. Um, there are a lot of STEM students that want to serve others, and that's kind of the main reason why they want to do STEM, which is great, but there's other majors outside of the STEM-related fields that you can do that. So just exploring those options, taking your time, kind of shopping around for classes, you definitely have time to do that um, during your time at St. Mary's. And then we offer our students a lot of resources and opportunities. One big um, resource that comes to mind is the one-on-one -on -one attention you get from a pre-med advisor who's specific to your track. A lot of times this, this is the professor or the chair of the department in the major that you're studying and they have a lot of field experience. They have the highest degree in their field and they're there for you. They have time to serve all their students since we are a smaller college. And then we also believe that our students can thrive in a small classroom environment. Our average class size is about 15 to 18, which is really great, especially when you're pursuing those rigorous STEM majors um, and those classes. You can ask questions, your professor knows who you are, there's open office hours. Um, for example, our clinical rotations for nursing, we limit those to eight students per rotation. So all of our students are able to use the equipment, get their own samples, work with the doctors and nurse practitioners in the hospital that they're doing their rotation. And then we also are a liberal arts college. So this is a huge um, bonus, I think, for any liberal arts college. It's such a positive thing because um, it gives students a foundation of critical thinking skills, intercultural competence. St. Mary's develops really strong writers, research skills, different things that will stand out in your grad school applications and just your resumes in the general healthcare world once you get that medical degree. It's really important to have the technical skills, obviously, arguably the most important thing, but it's also important how you learn to interact with families as a doctor or a medical professional, how you develop, how you tell them good news or bad news, how you work as a team, your writing skills. And having that liberal arts college base is a perfect foundation to kind of propel you to med school and then into your career field after that. We also have a career crossings office on campus. And this is an office that just specializes in anything from finding internships, fine tuning your resume, they do mock interviews, they host a variety of events for students, they help you with career choices after college, find a grad school, and they also throw a career fair every spring. And then our students also get invited to the Notre Dame Career Fair. So they're a phenomenal office that you have access to long after you graduate, as well as at, when you're a current student at St. Mary's. Our students also conduct advanced research, usually in an area of their own interest. So they're not just working alongside a professor who has his or her own research project. They're actually doing research about something that they are very interested in and passionate about. Um, our students present at national and regional conferences, and they're even published in journals. So a lot of times our students end up doing graduate level research as an undergraduate, which is a great thing to put on resumes. It's a great thing to prepare you for grad school when you're going to be doing tons of research. Um, you can see the two bullet points there are two sample projects that our students have done. The second bullet, paper analytical devices, also known as the PADS project was started at St. Mary's. It was done by a professor and then a ton of undergrad students. Notre Dame ended up tagging along with us and working on the project. And it is still predominantly done by undergrad students, an occasional grad student and professors. But these are devices that are basically made of paper, they're lightweight, and they test whether a medication is real or fake or not. Um, and this was developed by students and we do have a patent on it now. So those are some of the things that you'll be doing as an undergrad student. And for my last slide, I just wanted to share with you guys some of the successful results that come from a St. Mary's education. 90% um, of our pre-med students who have obtained a 3.6 or higher GPA are accepted into medical school or another healthcare pro program. 51% of our pre-med students study abroad. That's something that's really popular at St. Mary's in general. They do research abroad. There's a ton of different time frames, so you definitely have time to do that if you're pursuing a STEM degree. Um, we have summer programs, academic programs, week-long programs, all the way to year-long programs for students. And then 97% of students say St. Mary's has contributed to their ability to do research. Our students do research 
at St. Mary's on campus, also at Notre Dame, and our professors are just the most supportive. If a student wants to do research, and almost all of our STEM majors do, um, they want to help that student be able to do that. And then 95% of our graduates are either employed full-time or enrolled in some type of graduate school program. And that's just true of St. Mary's in general, not, not only the STEM majors, but we're really happy with our students. And I just wanted to thank you guys for listening to the St. Mary's section of this. And now I'm going to pass it off to Jamie from IUPUI. Thanks, Lindsay, I appreciate that. Um, so my name is Jamie Newsom. I am the Assistant Director of Regional Recruitment and Outreach at IUPUI. Uh, to give you a little bit of background about IUPUI, we are a very unique institution and we like to say that we're the best of three worlds. So we're actually a joint partnership between Indiana University and Purdue University. We also have the wonderful city of Indianapolis right outside our back door. So we consider that um, a huge opportunity for our students. We are the largest urban research institution in the state of Indiana and the third largest school in Indiana. We currently offer 450 different degree programs through both IU and Purdue. So um, upon your graduation from IUPUI, you will earn either an Indiana University degree or a Purdue University degree. And probably the most important thing um, for this talk is the fact that we have easy access to five different hospitals on our campus. So we are located right downtown. These hospitals are on or attached to our campus, which just provides a lot of amazing opportunities for our students. Next slide, please. Thank you. So this lists out some of our most um, popular uh, academic programs. So our nursing program is a non-direct admit program. So you do have to come in and do one year of prereqs before you can be considered for the nursing program. But our nursing program is one of the largest in the country. So we do enroll 100 students every fall and we enroll 100 students every spring. So if you are interested in pursuing nursing at IUPUI, you do have access to those five hospitals that I just mentioned. So you have the opportunity to do clinicals, rotations, even just volunteerism right there in your own backyard. We also offer a dental hygiene program. So our dental hygiene um, is also a non-direct admit program, but it is a Bachelor of Science program. So you will earn a four-year degree at the only school of dentistry in the state of Indiana, which is located on our campus in Indianapolis. One of the things that I think is most unique about IUPUI is that we offer undergraduate degree programs through the IUPUI School of Med. So the School of Medicine is on our campus in Indianapolis. It won't be down in Bloomington, um, but you are actually able to earn a Bachelor of Science degree. So if you want to be in the health industry, but you're thinking maybe not pre-med or nursing, that's not really the track that is best for you. We do offer these four-year programs in things like medical imaging technology. So if you wanted to be a sonographer, you could earn a bachelor's degree in that. Um, if you wanted to work in radiation therapy, again, you can earn a four-year bachelor's degree in that program through the IU School of Med um, at IUPUI. And before I jump to the pre-professional tracks, I just want to point out that we have so many more health-related programs at IUPUI. So not only do we have the ones that are based, um, you know, in more of the STEM fields, we have a lot of really awesome fields that are re related in global health in um, epidemiology, which is the study of infectious diseases. We have a health sciences program that students can major in. We even have a healthcare technology program. So if you're interested in being in a hospital setting, but you prefer more of the technology side, we have a program for that. With regards to our pre-professional tracks, you can see there that we offer, um, you know, all the pre-med programs, pre-dentistry, pre-occupational therapy, et cetera. Um, it's really important to note that there is really no such thing as a pre-med major anymore. These are more of the tracks that are set up that allows you to major in whatever you want to and then go on and pursue medical school or dental school after you've completed your undergraduate career. Now, obviously, the most popular majors, even at IUPUI, for things like uh, pre-med and pre-dentistry are going to be your biology and your chemistry, um, some even like the neuroscience. But we've actually established several different majors throughout the, the entire university that are pre-professional tracks. So, for example, um, you can major in epidemiology as a pre-med track. Um, the classes in that program are designed to make sure that you are ready and prepared to apply to med school. Um, another one is biomedical engineering. So if you wanted to have that engineering portion, but you really are thinking med school is your end goal, you can actually major in biomedical engineering and have the classes ready in order to be prepared to apply to med school. And the same is true with the other programs that are listed here. So we have multiple different majors that actually funnel into the same path. 
So here are some of the st steps to success and some of the things that we offer at IEPUI. Um, the first and foremost is our Office of Pre-Professional and Career Preparation, or our PREPS office. This office is based in our School of Science. Um, so if you were a biology major, a chemistry major, this is where you would go to make sure that you are taking the steps necessary in order to be prepared for your uh, med school application or your uh, professional degree application. Our Health and Life Sciences Advising Center. So this is actually a really fun thing that we offer on our campus. One of the great things about coming into IUPUI is that you don't have to know your major. So if you know that you want to work in some type of healthcare field, you can absolutely apply to IUPUI undecided. And then our Health and Life Sciences Advising Center will sit down and work with you and kind of try to direct you on the proper path based on your interests and your ultimate career goals. So they will work with students to help make sure that they are applying directly into their program Program. But again, you don't have to come in knowing exactly what it is you want to do. Just knowing that you want a career in some type of health related field is fine. We offer a first year biology apprenticeship program. So this is actually for our first year biology students who are interested in doing lab research. You can be in a paid research position in the first semester at IEPUI. So it's a great opportunity to do research not only um, on campus, but also in one of those hospitals that I mentioned earlier. Because the IU School of Medicine is located on our campus, there are summer programs for undergraduate students through the IU School of Medicine. And then I said this multiple times, but really having those five adjacent hospitals is priceless for our students because there are a number of different internship opportunities. Um, and most of those are going to come through the Life Health Sciences Internship Program. So that program is specifically designed to help students find internships or jobs in health related careers. So it's a special segment of our career services office that works specifically with our Life and Health Sciences Internship Program. Um, if you'd like to learn more, I am doing another presentation, just IUPUI on Tuesday, October 6th, and I did put some links over here to help you um, kind of guide you on the right direction. So it talks a little bit more about science, the PREPS program at IUPUI, um, and also the Life and Health Sciences Internship Program. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Michelle Rogers from St. Louis University. Hi, my name is Michelle, um, and I'm from St. Louis University. And SLU is a medium-sized Catholic Jesuit research university. Um, almost half of our undergraduate majors, so almost 45 of our 90 undergraduate majors are health, STEM, engineering, or science related. And you can see all the different ones listed on our website. Um, we have on our South Campus, two hospitals, an international research facility, our medical school, our School of Health Science, nursing, and so much more. Um, the opportunities at SLU and in the city of St. Louis with our SSM healthcare system really stretches far and wide for our students. Um, with our campus in Madrid, Spain, and all of our majors on campus can study abroad during the year or in the summer, and it will not put them behind to graduate. And some of our students will even have clinical experience while they're abroad. Students can come in still deciding though in their major, but most can start directly in their field of study. So engineering or nursing or PT, OT, any of those majors can start right in their major. Some will apply to direct entry programs or scholar programs at SLU, which will, that's what I'm going to point out next. SLU offers some direct entry programs, PT, OT, AT and nursing. So physical therapy, occupational therapy, athletic training, and nursing are all direct entry programs at SLU. You can use the common application or our SLU online application, both of which are free, and students apply to these accelerated programs and start right in them as freshmen, and they don't apply again. Once they're in, they're in. Physical therapy is a six-year direct entry doctorate of physical therapy program we typically start about 95 freshmen. It's one of the larger direct entry programs out there. And we typically graduate almost the same amount, which is great. Occupational therapy is a five-year master program. Students will receive, the, will receive their master's degree in five years. They basically start their two-year master program in their fourth year um, of their undergrad. Same thing with athletic training. Athletic training is a five-year master program as well. Athletic training of these three um, 
direct entry programs. Athletic training is one of the only ones that you could actually start in health sciences or start in something and transfer into it. Nursing is a four year Bachelor of Science degree. Nursing at SLU is only direct entry. You can't transfer into it. Students can start freshman year and we have a very large program. We take about 150 first year students that start as freshmen and we graduate almost 150 um, students four years later. Um, we are test optional this year for all of our majors, but all four of these are also test optional. So next slide, please. Again, all of these programs have amazing retention and students do stay in them and clinical experience have many options. Um, and they can do all of those clinical experiences in St. Louis, but they have options to do them anywhere else. We have also scholar programs that students can apply for admission to SLU and then also apply with a separate application directly into the graduate program at SLU for a smaller separate um, spot into the graduate programs. Students apply for these by December 1st of their senior year. So communication science and disorder, which is also speech and language um, pathology, pharmacy scholar and physician assistant have limited spots to their graduate program that our students can apply to. This year, all of these programs, again, are test optional. Um, I have the, kept the scores on there so that you can see um, relevance to what they've done in the past, but they will be looking at the transcripts and your science and math type courses um, in the four years that you've been in high school. But I just kept them on there so you could kind of see um, what they were looking for in the past. The biggest program, next, next slide. The biggest program at SLU and the most popular is the Medical Scholar Program. This program, um, students apply by December 1st of their senior year. It's an opportunity for students to have admission to our med school. Students will be reviewed by their transcript. This is also test optional. By the, they will be reviewed by their transcript, two essays, two letter of recs, and their um, activities. Students with exceptional transcripts, along with their additional activities, are good candidates for this program. This is a very, one of the largest medical scholar pro, or one of the largest med programs. We enter about 95 students um, into this freshman year. And you can see some of the academic profile. Basically, we're looking for high achieving students, um, A's and B's on their transcript and some of the highest level courses offered at your high school. Um, these students really, um, they interview for the med school their sophomore year in college, and then they move right into the um, med school at, uh, at SLU. What's important to know for all of our science students are the opportunities that they have at SLU. Um, next slide, please. All students have to prepare for the next professional step. And it's not enough to have just a good GPA. In the last, the last 10 years alone, it's become so much more competitive to get into professional programs. It's harder to get in more than ever. Um, medical school and PA school, even is less than 40% of students get in when they apply on the first time. The more your GPA goes up and the more involved you are in your undergraduate time, the more opportunities you have. So we have research, volunteering, shadowing. We have a medical clinic run by our med students. We have global brigades, medical missions, a SLU hospital, a children's hospital, our St. Louis University Hospital, um, just opened last month. It's a brand new trauma center for the city of St. Louis. We have an interdisciplinary building that combines STEM majors with our engineering department. We have so many leadership opportunities. We have 200 different groups and organizations. Again, we have two hospitals on campus. We also have international opportunities with our Madrid campus. And I think it's really important to know that our students are engaged and that is one of the best things that you can prepare yourself for as a student is to get involved along with good grades um, right when you start preparing for pre-health your freshman year. Um, I am going to now hand it over to Patrick Walsh. Thank you very much, Michelle.
Um, Patrick Walsh, Illinois State University. I know you already heard that, but just wanted to say it again. Um, I'm one of the associate directors of admissions uh, for campus and uh, Bloomington Normal is where we're located. So on the next slide, you can see a map of where we're located right smack dab in the center of the state, about two and a half hours from St. Louis, about two hours from Chicago. Um, as we look at our community, uh, which is on our next slide here, um, you can see that we have just under 21,000 students on campus. Um, we are a four-year public university. Um, well, something unique about our population is the proportion of undergraduate students. So 18,250 students are uh, on campus going after that bachelor's degree. Uh, and a third of those students are students who have uh, gone to a community college, junior college, or are transferring in from another university. You can see that we have a small graduate school population, um, 2,600 students on campus that are pursuing their master's uh, degree, a certificate program, or a PhD. Um, you can see the breakdown, 57% female, 43% male. We have 47 different states and territories uh, represented on our campus, as well as 74 countries, and over a quarter of our students are from underrepresented populations. In terms of looking at the academic programs that we offer on campus, um, on the next slide, you can see that uh, we have uh, quite a bit to offer. So these are not our specific majors, but our career clusters that will allow you to easily see uh, what uh, majors we have in each of these different areas. Um, tonight, we'll be talking a lot about the nursing health and wellness uh, and all the majors associated with that, as well as some within science and math. Illinoisstate.edu backslash academics is the best place that you can go uh, to gather this information. Um, we also have a button uh, on our academics page that allows you to see all of our different uh, pre-professional options or pathways that would be available to you. So we can go ahead and jump into the next slide and some of our health related options. Um, I do wanna start with our nursing program. So our nursing program is direct admit for our incoming freshmen, as well as our students who are transferring in. So you need to be admitted directly into that program in order to pursue that. If you come to Illinois State and you are undecided, there is not an option for students to uh, go into that program because of the strong uh, retention rate that we have for nursing. It is a very popular program and a competitive program for us. Um, for our incoming freshmen uh, this past year, we had over 1,100 applications for just over 300 spaces. Um, as you look at the competitiveness of a program like this, um, if you're looking at averages for grade point average and test scores um, this past year, uh, a three, about a 3.8 on a four point scale was that average GPA. Um, although we are test optional this year, I did also wanna report that uh, about a 28 ACT, 1300 SAT score was the average for students that were admitted this past year. But again, we are test optional. We are going to look at uh, other factors for our nursing program. As you select nursing on our application, and it is a homegrown application for Illinois State, we are not part of coalition or the common application. Um, when you select the, the major of nursing, um, we are going to ask you a few more specific questions uh, about your interests. So um, as you select that, you will be answering questions uh, regarding your participation um, or having a, a CNA, an EMT, being a paramedic or a medic, uh, a job or internship that supports healthcare, uh, a medical mission trip or volunteering or being a junior volunteer at a healthcare institution. So we're gonna ask you some questions about your experiences there. We also have an essay for our nursing students that is really about the, uh, the mission, uh, the vision and the values of our program and asking you to, to read that statement and prepare a 500 word essay talking about your experiences uh, and what you would bring to uh, the Illinois State University campus. So we'll review all of that information uh, to make a decision. Again, it is a direct admit program. Um, we do have several other options as well in nursing though. Um, we have an RN to BSN program uh, we have an accelerated nursing program for students who have a bachelor's degree in another area, um, a master's program, certificate program, a PhD program, as well as a doctoral of nursing practice program uh, on our campus. Let's spend a little bit of time on some of our other majors uh, that we have here. You can see the biologies, chemistry, uh, allied health professions, health and human performance. Um, those are through our School of Kinesiology and Recreation, Psychology and Therapeutic Recreation. So these are all programs and majors at Illinois State University that align very nicely with students who are going into a pre-professional pathway. You can see those over on the right-hand side. Uh, as part of the application, you will also have a question that will ask you if you have interest in these pre-professional pathways, and that will allow you to uh, select the pre-professional pathways that you are interested in, which will then help us to better serve you 
um, with uh, your career plans, your academic plans in the area that you want to pursue. So for instance, if you were uh, going to become a physician's assistant, um, we can help you with uh, letting you know that our allied health professions, biology and health and human performance majors align closely with the prerequisites needed to get into a physician's assistant school. Same thing for dental medicine as we're looking at those majors, chemistry and biology align nicely with that. Um, as you select your pre-professional pathway program, we have two advisors that are on campus that will be there to assist you every step of the way in preparing you for that next step. On the next slide, we'll start talking a little bit about what they, they can do for you. So our pre-professional advisement, we have about 500 students on campus uh, who are in the nursing program. We have an additional 500 who are uh, looking at an interest for uh, going on to a professional school that is health related. So as we're breaking down pre-professional advisement, what they can do is uh, first and foremost, uh, your advisors are going to align a four-year plan of study and how your major plan of study will also align with uh, your career goals uh, to move on to a professional school. Um, they're going to let you know the typical prerequisite courses that you're going to need in order to get into that professional school, and they're going to help you with recommendations throughout, like whether or not uh, those professional schools in the area you're interested in are going to take AP credit or pass or no pass uh, credit. They are going to also uh, let you know, uh, for instance, um, for uh, going into a PA school, uh, the type of grade point average that you would need. Um, taking uh, the minimum amount of biology, how that is not going to be valued very highly as uh, schools are looking at that. For pre-medicine, um, the emphasis on psychology is the second most tested uh, area on the uh, MCAT exam. So these little bits of rec recommendation are going to help you with better preparing your courses with getting to that next step. In terms of academic success, you are going to want to have strong grades in your biology, chemistry, your physics and your math courses. Uh, those are highly sought after at the next level. Um, a high cumulative grade point average, um, and was mentioned earlier, uh, having some research. Um, and at Illinois State, with the small number of graduate students we have, you should have plenty of opportunities to participate in research and add that to your professional resume. As you're looking at exploring um, the next steps in this process and how you get there, uh, we do have two courses that are uh, one credit courses for students who are moving on to a professional school. Uh, we have our careers for health professionals that's offered uh, in the fall, uh, one year prior to your application process, uh, where you are going to learn more about that process, better prepare so that you can be successful uh, in applying to and being accepted to your professional school. We have a mentorship in health professions as well, a one credit hour class where you are paired with a, uh, a mentor uh, in the medical profession. Um, that you are interested and you are able to shadow, you are able to build those relationships, learn a little bit more about the area that you are going into. In addition, we strongly recommend internships for our students. Uh, we also have student organizations um, for our students to uh, be involved with so that they can better prepare uh, along with the other students who are going through that process. Uh, last but not least, I think the application preparation process is uh, extremely important. Um, we do offer mock interviews, so we have staff around campus that will study up on uh, like dentistry school and what that application process looks like, and we'll perform mock interviews with students and give real-time feedback to better prepare them and familiarize them with the process. There's a lot uh, in terms of test prep that will occur. Um, we're going to help you in uh, those leadership opportunities across your academic career in building those letters of recommendation that will be needed, as well as that professional resume. Um, our advisors are there, as I mentioned, from, from day one to assist you within this process. They stay in touch, they keep you engaged, and they want to make sure that you're well aware of what is necessary for you to move on to that next step. With that, that concludes our portion of this portion of the presentation. Um, as you can see, uh, we have questions and contact information that are coming up, but as our other panelists join us, I will turn it over for the Q&A portion. Thank you. Let us know if you have any questions, but you've heard from four different types of schools and you've heard of many different programs. Um, because the next steps are so important and we see there are different ways to get where you want to go, utilizing all your resources in your undergraduate times is really important. But finding the best fit of college is definitely what will support you in getting you to the next step. Are there any questions um, that you all have in getting started. <clears throat> oh. 
Um, one of them here, maybe one of Patrick, Lindsay, or Jamie. Um, if I am still deciding um, as a current student, how do I get started? Who, who would I go to to help me decide eventually what I want to do? Sure, I can, I can jump in on that one. Um, we have about 20% of our students will come in as an undecided student, and we have what's called University College, which is first year academic advisement. And this is uh, there to help with the transition to college, but also to make students aware of um, what their opportunities are on campus. Uh, in addition, we do have uh, a three hour course called Thrive that can help students with career exploration if they're really unsure of what they would need to do. Uh, that first step really is um, talking with their academic advisor about what their interests are. Um, we work with our career services as well to kind of match their strengths along with their interests for um, what could potentially be a career uh, here. If they have an interest in health, that's when we would get them in touch with our advisors, um, whether it be uh, in our um, health sciences department or through our pre-professional uh, pathways. Um, I could take this one. What happens if I don't get into a direct entry program? I think it's really important to know that if you don't get into a direct entry program, we've heard from all four colleges that they have pre programs. If you want to be a nurse, you can be a nurse. We heard that from all four of us here. And I think that's really important. If you want to be a doctor, you can do biology, you can do neuroscience, you can do, I mean, all four of us listed so many different things. The, there is no, there are many different paths to go to what you want to go to. And I think that if you have a goal in mind, there's not just one path. And I think that's, I, I, I personally believe um, watching my own daughter go to PA school that, you know, there are many different paths. Um, one other question, maybe if someone wants to take. How do you determine which pre-health program to apply to? Um, um, anyone want to take that? I can jump in. Um, I would just say, you know, I, I think the question was about uh, high school students who are not yet applying this year. Mm -hmm. And I think this is true for pretty much any career that you're interested in. Um, see who you can find to talk to. So if you're not exactly sure what it is you want to do, um, find doctors, talk to your own doctor and ask them about their experience. Talk to nurses that you know, um, make those connections and find out what it would really be like to be in that profession. And I think that, again, that's true for, for everybody. And the other thing is just work with your school counselors. Um, they might be able to offer you some guidance. And then also your admissions counselors. You know, We can offer some guidance as to what programs may fit with your interests and your needs. Um, and then obviously, as Patrick already mentioned, once you get to your university, make sure that you meet with your advisors because they're really going to provide you the path necessary to end up uh, in a career that you really want to enjoy. The next question is, this is a good one. Um, what can I do in high school to help further progress and prepare myself for the health field and schooling? Um, I, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, unless Lindsay, are you ready? Sure, I can okay. do whatever you wanna do, Michelle. <laughs> no, go ahead, I saw you think well. Um, yeah, I would just say take certain courses in high school. I know um, sometimes you're able to even get like some clinical hours as a high school student. And as Jamie said before, asking your, your own doctor about their experience, if you have an athletic trainer or somebody like that. Um, but definitely challenge yourself with, you know, AP courses if you can, the chem, the bio courses. We love to see that. Um, and you'll kind of figure out a little bit about how those, what those courses look like, how they'll look like in college, and if that's something that you're really passionate about. I agree. I also think it's very difficult in this COVID world to do internships and stuff like that. So what I would also really challenge you with is ask your parents, do they have someone who is a physician assistant or do they have someone who is a nurse and ask to interview them because you can't necessarily always get into the hospital right now to volunteer or you can't get into somewhere to do the hands-on work. So at least interview them to see what they're doing on a daily basis. That's something that we can do right now 
to see what what is what they're doing in their job. Uh, how would I, how would one go about getting an internship? Someone want to take that? Sure, I can jump in on, on that one. And within high school, I, I agree with what you all were talking about in terms of preparing yourself as, as familiar as you can get with that area. Ask people what they like, what they don't like about what they're doing uh, to better prepare you for or familiarize you with what the actual job is. We may see things that are on television shows or we see things in social media and we make assumptions about what that job actually is. Getting to know someone who's a professional in that area, I, I fully recommend that. In terms of internships, um, <clears throat> I do agree as well. Uh, COVID has thrown somewhat of a curveball in the ability for students to to do that, where you could say, you know, starting to volunteer at a hospital or, uh, you know, at any facility that um, is related to 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 the health profession or medical profession would be a good start there. Um, if you're looking at internships, I think you would have to work through your high school if you're looking at doing them right now. Um, when you get to college, uh, in terms of internships, like for us, we have internship coordinators uh, that are within each of our departments that can assist with um, what internships are available, as well as how you would go about uh, securing those uh, those opportunities. And um, I guess with a nod of the head, is that similar at the other colleges and universities represented here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The next question is, does HOSA look good on applications? And for those of you not familiar, are the Health Occupation Students of America. I think any, any type of exposure to health careers and any type of experience and leadership, you know, our medical scholar program is one of the most difficult programs for students to get in. And they say any involvement in any leadership experience in high school is what they're looking for. So absolutely, the answer is yes. Would you all agree? Yeah, I would also add that that might be valued differently at different places. So as you are embarking on this journey to figure out which school to go to based on the interests that you have, uh, keep your options open, apply to several different places to make sure that uh, you are familiarizing yourself with all the different options that are out there, but again, uh, you'll find a right school for you. And I would say the same goes for our students that are looking at those professional schools for medical school or PA school or anywhere else. Um, definitely keep your options open, um, apply to places that you're interested, uh, because again, some of your experiences may be valued a little bit more at one place over the other, and you'll never know unless you're going through that, that application process. Do you have summer programs for high school students interested in a pre-med track? Uh, well, St. Louis University has what we call the AIMS program. So yes, we do. Anyone else have one? Yep, we have different programs through uh, our school of biological sciences, uh, as well as some of the other STEM fields that are um, pre-med uh, related that students can participate in over the summer. The same is true at IEPY. We also have STEM events. Um, they're not super long, but they're day-long events, or we have STEM weekend events that students can see what current students are doing um, and get a feel for that research and what that would look like if they were a student. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions? I would just want to mention that with all of our contact information up there and this being recorded, as people have questions, please reach out to the four of us. That's what we're here for. Uh, we love working with you. Um, so if you don't have questions tonight, but you come across them later, um, let us know, reach out to us, email us, check out our website so that we can assist you in making sure that, again, you have all the information that you need in order to make an informed decision about uh, which college you're going to and all of the resources that we have available to support you. So, And thanks for, for joining us tonight. Yes, um, thank you so much to Patrick, Michelle, Jamie. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh no, Lindsay. I lost my screen. Thank you. <laughs> Struggling. Um, and of course, I, you know, we were going so well until the end.
but um, learned so much about health professions um, during this session. So for our participants, please um, do after you close this window, there'll be a very quick four question survey. Please fill that out and provide us with that feedback. Please sign up for more sessions. You can check out the full schedule at www.iacac.org. And a recording will be available. So all sessions are being recorded and will be available at iacac.org. Again, thank you so much for coming and have a lovely evening. Thank you.